Good morning, Udo. Morning, Elizabeth. Good morning. Hello, Udo. Morning, host Mark here. Just a quick question. Um, I spoke to Vernon a bit earlier, and I was wondering uh, whether you have made any provisions for those who might um, inadvertently be forced to leave the meeting because of load shedding. Um, I'm shedding from 10 to 12. I have a good battery on my laptop, but my, my Wi-Fi is on a battery that doesn't last much longer than about half an hour. So. Um, I might have to miss the last hour of the meeting. Is is there any provision for these people in terms, especially in terms of voting? Um, I can maybe just comment on that. Uh, we are aware of that. Unfortunately, this has been thrown on, at, on us. Um, we will look at the results we get from the voting. And if the votes are very close and the effect of those who couldn't vote would have could have changed the outcome of the vote, then we will have to reconsider um, a, another voting session or something. But if the outcome is very um, obvious and, and couldn't be changed by those who, who, would, who are unfortunately not able to vote, then um, the vote will stand as is. And, and that's unfortunately for practical reasons, the best we can do at the moment. Understood. Makes a lot of sense. Thank you, Henning. Good morning, Leonora. Leonora, could you change your name um, to the full name, first name and surname? Um, we Good just morning. need that for that. Good morning. We just need that for the attendance register. You just need to right click on the actual on your picture, and then it says rename, and then you can change your name. Well, we are oh, getting you. ready for everybody to join. Uh, just again, if your name, your device displays you only with your first name, please uh, right click on your little screen or on the three dots and then change your display name to your name and surname so that uh, so that you are recognizable with your name and surname please if you don't know how to do it just unmute yourself and say please do it for me i can do it for you and i can give you any name that you choose but i would prefer the name that is really your name yeah i see we still got Penny without a surname. We got Raymond without a surname. Raymond, I assume it's Raymond Rieseberg. With your permission, Raymond, I will change you. I will rename you to Rieseberg, Raymond Rieseberg. That's probably right, yeah. Is this now the latest uh, um, adult uh, Taufe? Yes. Yes. It is almost nine o'clock. I'd like Johnny Engelbrecht to please show your picture. Johan Engelbrecht. Johnny. If I got it correct, Johnny, it's your birthday today. Is it correct? You're muted. Thank you for host for changing my name. Thank you. John, yes. it's your birthday today. Is that correct? Yeah. And all the best. Thank you very much for joining Synod on your birthday and all the best. And may God bless you. And thank you for all the work you're doing in the church council. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Normally we would uh, sing a little song for you, but uh, we've tried it before and it just doesn't work on Zoom. Um, but anyway, uh, we'll be singing in our hearts for you. So, Andy, you. why don't you sing on your own? I don't want to scare you all the way. We still, we got 58 participants at the moment. I think by the end of my song, we'll have maybe one or two left. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, 
nine o'clock, we got 58 participants, which means we have got um, more than we would require for quorum. We'll do roll call and everything else just now. Uh, yeah, I just quickly want to go on to share screen. And I just, uh, while you're busy with that, uh, I see that, uh, Alfred, you, you still need to add your uh, surname, uh, change your name to include the surname, and the same for Penny. Penny, I suppose it's Penny Summerskill. If you can just write uh, that one can see your full name on the display name. You do it by clicking onto the little screen, either right click or click on the three dots. And then uh, there's a drop down, and on that you will find rename, and there you can then type your full name, name and surname, please. Um, how do I do it, Bishop? Uh, uh, good morning, good morning, Bishop. Sorry, good I have. Good morning, everybody. Okay. Uh, good morning, good morning. What is, uh, I, I can do it for you. What is your surname? Uh, Tango Lima. TLH. Uh, Amber Lima H, yes. Uh, o for Oscar. Yes. A for Alpha. E for Echo. L for Lima. E for Echo. So, Alfred DT, trial. Is that correct, Alfred, the way it's spelled now? Uh, yep, T L H O A E L E. Good, thank you very much. But you forgot one name, Dieter. <laughs> Dieter. <laughs> that might deter us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, thank you very, thank you very much for all of you for being on time and sticking to the time. We definitely need to stick to the time today because uh, Vernon will be load shed at 12 o'clock and to do the finances without the treasurer would be rather difficult. So yeah, um, we will definitely try to push through and make sure that we finish rather early than late. I'd like to uh, welcome Henning? you all. Yes. So uh, some of us will be load shed at 10 o'clock from 10 to 12. We are aware of that. I'm going to comment on that just now. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thanks very much, Rene. Me, um, I'm, al I'm also low shaded. I had to shift the, 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 the premises and go somewhere else. We've been on low shading from eight. Yeah, I'm aware of that. Uh, please, let's not engage into the load shading discussion at this stage. We, we're just trying to start this um, synod meeting. Um, I'd like to welcome you all to the finances uh, session of the third sitting of the Seventh Church Synod of Nelksa. Um, it is held virtually. We have discussed that before. I just like to state that we will be recording this meeting. The recording of this meeting is purely for the Senate Council, Lisa Lotte, who is keeping the minutes. Thank you, Lisa Lotte, and for Church Council internal use. It will not. It will not be made available to others. Should you? object to this meeting being recorded. You now have the option to leave the meeting. I hope that's not going to happen. Um, but we will be recording this meeting and you'll have a little picture on the screen. Once you've read that, you can click got it and then we can continue. Uh, while we're here, um, before we go to the devotion, I just want to, for those of you who are possibly being load shed, we are aware of that. Unfortunately, this, this has happened. If we get to the point of voting, if the votes could be changed by the people who cannot no longer um, vote due to load shedding, we would have to relook at voting at a later revoting at a later stage. If the vote is very clear and the, it would not be possible to change the vote, even if the people who will be load shed could be, uh, would all vote in the opposite um, direction of the, the vote that was cast uh, overall, then um, we will stick to the vote uh, that has been uh, given. 
Unfortunately, it is out of the, our hands, this low chilling. I would like to hand over to Horst um, to start with the opening devotion. Thank you, Henning. I greet you all uh, on this very strange special occasion. Uh, it would have been much better if we could physically be sitting together for our normal synod. Um, and now it's this way. I want to read a passage which uh, I came across only two weeks ago, three weeks ago, as I was preparing for a sermon, um, realizing for the first time that uh, there are two chapters in the New Testament that deal with finances. And uh, I wasn't aware of that before that. Somehow it didn't register with me. Uh, and the two chapters are 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and 9. The Old Testament has a lot on finances, on giving, on tithing, on uh, the first fruits. The New Testament is almost totally silent, except for these two chapters. And the background is that Paul is encouraging all his congregations to collect for the poor congregation in Jerusalem. Uh, and they are collecting funds. And it's fascinating to read both chapters because here they describes how People are selected to take care of it. In other words, treasurers to become treasurers uh, uh, and to make sure that everything is above board, that no money is abused uh, or goes into the wrong pockets. It's all described in those two chapters. For this morning, I want to read uh, from chapter 8, verses 12 to 15. He speaks now to the Corinthians and speaks about their giving. If the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be for your need, in order that there may be a fair balance. So in this part, he then says, at the moment, you are in a position to support others. So that is what is happening now. But it might change so that sometime in future, there might be abundance somewhere else, and you might be in need. And then this giving helps each other to a fair balance, as the New Revised Standard Version translated. As it is written, the one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. I find the whole two passages fascinating because there it becomes clear that for Paul, giving is not a law, it's not prescribed in detail. The Old Testament does prescribe when you need to give what and how much. So it's all clearly defined. In the New Testament, it is left open. And Paul actually says he turns the giving into a discussion between each Christian and the Lord. So uh, he then says in chapter 9, each one of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, but for God loves a cheerful giver. So he takes away the law and the prescription and, and, and the prescribing factor. And he says, it's between you and the Lord and give and give cheerfully. Now, I could speak a lot and carry on speaking, but in view of the time, I will keep it very short and just summarize that in these two chapters, uh, the finances and today having our finance session, that's why I focus on that. Finances show a different dimension to church. First of all, Paul says all congregations are encouraged to collect for this poor congregation. And by that, he makes every congregation aware that they are part of a bigger church, the church of Christ 
that is spreading throughout the world. So he wants the congregations not to be individual islands, each one for themselves, but he makes them aware of the greater church. And then he says, our giving is for Christ's sake. Because Christ blessed us, we can share. Because we are blessed, because we have been cared for, we can care. The next thing that he points out is that our giving is not paying to God, but gratitude, is showing gratitude for what God does. And then comes a very interesting observation that Paul makes. He says, and your giving then leads to others becoming grateful because those who are receiving then become grateful and praise the Lord. And then he makes throughout these two passages time and again points out that ultimately our giving results in more people hearing the gospel and hearing the good news of Christ and praising God. So he squarely puts the finances into the realm of faith and says the finances directly have to do with our faith and the finances support our faith and the finances actually help spreading our faith if our attitude is not a legalistic one but one of serving one of praising one of uh, sharing because christ is our lord so the issue of fair balance in, in our discussion uh, and our our uh, um, budget, uh, I want to link that to the Solidarity Fund, uh, where, where we assist each other, where it's like a, one has more, one has less, and we try to balance it out by the ones who have more giving more. Paul says, this is a very important aspect, because you are not always on top, sometimes you are down there, and then in the bigger church, that is where we then are supposed to also help and support each other. But most of all, Paul makes it very clear, we are journeying together. That's what the name Synod means, being on the road together. And in our giving and receiving, we experience this fellowship to the glory of the Lord. And so my prayer is that today's session will not just be a business session, but that we will experience part of this aspect of our faith and what we have and what we contribute to glorify the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, we pray for our meeting now that you will bless us, that you will bless the fellowship, even though it's virtual, and that you will guide us through the synod to the glory of your name. This we pray because you are the Lord. Amen. Amen. Henning, over to you again. You are still muted and without a video. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much for the devotion. Um, I heard somebody say, Amen. Thank you very much for that, Amen. I think we all agree, but please remain muted. Um, yeah, one thing that has happened, I just want to mention again, we, we have all been surprised by load shedding again which was until yesterday evening not anticipated. So if you have any concerns that you, and you know that you will be low chat from 10 o'clock, or if you've got any issues that you want to have raised at the Synod meeting, please type it into the chat uh, and, and do it as soon as possible. Heinu Kuzel will monitor the chat and we will then discuss this point. Even if you are low chat, you, you will then get feedback on that issue later. And I'd just like to repeat that if those that are if the votes of those that are low shed could material change the outcome of the voting, then we will have to reconsider um, a revote at a later stage. If however the number of those of you are, that are low shed is minimal and if the outcome of the vote is very um, one-sided, um, and the outcome could not be changed by those who are low chat, then the vote will remain and stay. The agenda for this morning, um, we'll start or we started with the opening devotion. We'll, 
I'll explain the procedures. We'll get to that just now. We will constitute the Senate. This is a formal Senate session. So we need to, and we will proceed as per a normal Senate. We will then hear the finance report for the years 2019 and 2020 by Vernon. We will then listen to the budget of 2022 and 2023. We will then hear the church law and we'll have discussions, questions, and hopefully adopt these when we get there. We will also announce the date and venue for the, oh, I still got analog synod here. Um, it's actually a synod in presence. We were debating the word to be used um, for the in-person synod. So it says yes, still analog synod. So yeah, you all know what we mean with this. We'll have a closing prayer at the end. I assume that we would be finished in approximately two hours. Um, we'll see how things go and how discussions happen. We will have a tea break somewhere one to one and a half hours into the meeting. We will, uh, yeah, by now everybody of us will have had some virtual meetings in either in business or in church or in other aspects of life, university, school, whatever. So we are fairly familiar with these, just a couple of basic rules. We have muted all delegates. We like you to please remain muted. We will have a question session after each session. So there will be time for questions and discussions. Please keep the video and audio off unless you are speaking. This helps with the bandwidth. Please ensure that your full name is visible. Um, as I'm sh sharing the screen at the moment, I can't see all participants. We already discussed this at, before the meeting for those who logged in early. Please make sure that your name and surname is sh shown. If that's not the case, you can just right click onto your um, picture. Uh, it will then give you the option to rename and please type in name and surname. We need that when we actually constitute the synod. If you have a question, we prefer you to use the raise hand function. Uh, it might not be possible from all devices, so you can also use the chat. Uh, I have already mentioned that you please remain muted until you're requested to talk. You are welcome to use the chat function for all questions. And also, as I said, anything that you'd like to have discussed uh, and you are maybe concerned that you will not be present when we actually get to that point due to load shedding. Please do not use the chat function to engage in a parallel discussion. We had that in, in, in one of the pre-meetings. We'd like to avoid having parallel meetings, parallel discussions. Please only use the chat function for actual questions or comments concerning the subject at hand. Church Council wishes to thank all Senate delegates for joining this meeting today. We have held or have had pre-meetings on the 14th and 28th of August. And thank you to all those who attended these meetings. I think that most of you were present. We also thank all delegates who have given feedback, suggestions, or comments since those meetings. All these inputs are recorded and they will be discussed further in church council. Thank you very much. Although the main part of the third sitting of the seventh church synod of Nelxa is postponed to next year, it is necessary to hold the financial part of the synod today. As the business, business of Nelxa, and we said, or uh, Haas said, it's not just a business meeting. But the business of NALXA has to continue. We need to pay salaries and we need to pay other um, things. We need to manage our finance. Financial activities have to continue. So therefore we have to adopt the finances of the preceding years. And we also need to finalize the budget for 2022, 2023 today. We will now constitute the Senate. When we do the roll call, um, when you see your name on the screen, and I always have a, a number of people together at the same time on the screen, when you see your name, please switch on your video and unmute yourself. You don't need to do anything at that stage, but please uh, just unmute yourself and show your picture. When your name is read, 
please indicate your preference by the following means in order of preference. Firstly, physically raise your hand and vocally confirm your presence. That is the first option. If you, your device does not allow that, use the raise hand function. And if that is also not possible, then please state your presence in the chat by writing your name and yes after your chat. Heino Kuzel is monitoring the chat and he will then advise us of this. So we will start off and I, my picture is visible and yes, I am present, Henning Springer. Heino Kuzel. Present. Anna Kaduma Gumbi. Present. Present. Bishop Dr. Horst Müller. Present. Dean Theo Jekyll. Present. Dean Remo Köhne. Present. Dean Dirk Köstlin. Present. Deputy Dean Mark Meyer. Present. Mr. Johann Engelbrecht, the birthday child. Present. Mr. Vernon Filter. Present. Mr. Dieter Küsel. Mr. Dieter Küsel, are you present? Has anybody heard something from Dieter Küsel? I thought he, he was, was present. He was on earlier. He was on earlier. He's just joined again. He's just joined. Dieter no, uh, our, our electricity just went out, so a couple of us were kicked off. Okay. Hopefully but I see, Dieter's, I see Dieter's device. Uh, there he is, yes. Yeah, we're coming back on just with uh, cell phone data. Okay. Uh, Dieter, are you present? Can anybody see in the chat? Is I can Dieter see him. He's present. Yes. He's present. Yes. Anne Mokina? I'm present. Pastor Petra Roers. Present. Professor Dr. Friedeborg Wenhold. Present. For the Southern Circuit, Pastor Elke Karihill. Present. Pastor Manfred Müller Nedebock. Present. Pastor René Risch. Present. Pastor Victor Roers. Pastor Victor Present, Roers. Present, sorry. Present. Thank you. Andrew B. Present. Edmund Bunge. Present. Stella Cockburn. Coburn, sorry, Stella Coburn. Alles klar. Present. Dieter Dreves. Present. Anita Greve. Present. Stefan Lucht. Present. Aileen Piata. Piata, I'm not too sure on the pronunciation. Aileen. Aileen Piata. Aileen, are you there? I don't see her name on the attendance list, so it seems that she is not logged in. Okay, Aileen's not there. Holger Meyer. I'm present. Sigrun Ried. Present. Elizabeth Rommelsbacher. Present. David Round. David Round. Present. Martin Schröder. Martin Schröder. Has he registered? Yeah, I have registered. Okay, so you're present. Martin Schröder, you're present. Penny Summerskill. Present. Tanja Wichmann. Tanja Wichmann. I don't see her name on the, uh, on the list of those that are locked in, so she does not seem to be there. Probably Jens due to load. Jens von Delft. Yes, I'm here. For the Central Circuit, Pastor Wilbe Hunger. Present. Pastor Dieter Klem. Present. Pastor Jack Machoro.
I don't the, see his name on the list. He was here before earlier. I'm present. Thank you, Jack. Um, Abraham Bohr. Present. Margaret Dippena. Present. Konrad Hartmann. Present. Leonora Klein. Present. Uh, Vela Musum Como. Vela Musum Como. Does anybody see him? Okay, Maybe Bella is then considered not present at the moment. Karin Meyer. Present. Betty and Tembo. Betty Tembu. I don't see her name on the attendance list. Tebo and Kunyane. Present. Thank you, Paradi Pirva. Present. Gloria Sihume. Gloria. I see your name as well. Name as well. Maria Sieburg. Present. Alfred Schulane. Present. Karl Tobler. Present. Northern Circuit. Pastor Jan Duvenacher. Present. Pastor Detlef Tönsing. Present. Kurt Backeberg. Kurt Backeberg. I don't see his name on the list of those that are locked in. Not present. Then Ingo gave, gave us. I don't see his name. Rhino Hansen. Present. Klaus Krüger. Klaus Krüger. I don't see his name. Lamek Malele. Present. Thank you. Horst Meyer. Present. Eckhard Pape. We've just received an apology load in shedding. the chat. He has load shedding. He's load shedding. I believe there's problems in Korndal with that as well. Mark Rover. Present. Andreas Rüsch. Present. Rainer Schütz. Present. Herbert Zwitala. Present. Jürgen Voges. Jürgen Voges. Yes, I can see his hand. Dieter Wenhold. Present. Dankwart Wittenberg. Dankwart Present. Wittenberg. Thank you. Eastern Circuit. Pastor Rainer Focke. Present. Pastor Rüdiger Lutz. Present. Carsten Hinze. Present. Dieter Muhl. I don't see his name on the attendance list. Raymond Rieseberg. Present. Hans Schütte. Hans Schütter. I don't see his name. Bernd Wellmann. No, Bernd Wellmann. Shouldn't that be Bernd Klingenberg? Bernd Klingenberg. Okay, then there's an error. Lisa Lott, if you can correct that, please. Um, so that's Bernd Klingenberg. Is he there? Yes, present. Thank you. So that's Gerhard. where Bernd Klingberg, sorry, it must be Bernd Wellmann yeah. from Den Ferden der yeah. D. So Oops. that was correct. Uh, so was Bernd Wellmann is Bellmann. absent. So that and does not need to be corrected. He's absent hmm. for the circuit councils. Um, Gerhard Backeberg. Present. Now we got Bernd Klingenberg. Uh, I am busy. I'm busy. 
please repeat that. Whoever just made the comment, I didn't hear that. And then if I could say something, it's it's not Bent Velman, uh, it's Bent Velman is. It's Carl Velman, supposed to be. Carl Velman. Okay, we will. Is Carl Velman then here? Okay, both absent. Um, Alec Gumbi. Present. Carmen Westermeyer. Present. Co-opted members, Ms. Dieter Bocho Lebert. Present. Pastor Udo Lütke. Present. Cornelia Ortmann. Cornelia Ortmann, I saw her early on. She at the moment seems to be offline. She definitely was there uh, yeah, just now. Her. So it seems that she uh, might she's on our same there. electricity lines. So I'm assuming that's probably why. Yeah. Okay. So we'll mark it present, but we'll know that she's possibly low chat um, when we have got less votes, but we should mark her present. She was definitely there. We will constitute, while we're busy constituting the Senate, we have got, as far as we are aware, four people who have not been commissioned. And I'd like to hand over to Bishop Horst Müller to commission the new delegates. Thank you very much. I'm uh, just briefly uh, going to explain uh, the Senate period is always for uh, three Senate sessions. This is the third session. Um, and according to our records, uh, the following persons have not attended uh, the previous session. So you are here for the first time, Leonora Klein, Olga Meyer, Tebo Nkoyane and Rainer Schütz. Um, there's one person, uh, Rainer Fokker, who was in the Southern Circuit and now is in the Eastern Circuit, but he was already uh, commissioned for the Senate period, so he does not need to be recommissioned. Um, <clears throat> so if I'm correct, those are the four that have to be commissioned. And I ask, therefore, Leonora Klein, Holger Meyer, and Tebo Nkoyane and Rainer Schütz to unmute yourself. I'm going to read the introduction. And then I'm going to ask you by name uh, just now to commit uh, to, to, to say the Senate pledge. Grace to you and peace from our God and Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You are present Amen. because you have been elected or appointed according to the order of the church and are now members of the Senate. And you will, before God and this gathering, accept the office as member of the Senate and take the vow of your office. So that this may be done to the glory of the Lord and to the blessing of the church, let us hear a passage from Luke chapter 12, where Jesus says to his disciples, be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Now the vow of your office, and a reminder to all Senate delegates, that's the vow that you took when you were commissioned. The vow of your office, which you have to take with everybody interceding for you in prayer, is as follows. I solemnly declare before God and this Christian congregation that as a member of Synod, I will, in obedience to God's word and in faithfulness to the confession of the Evangelical Lutheran Church, strive after the aim that the Church may, in oneness of faith and communion of love, grow up into him who is the head, Jesus Christ. I therefore ask you, are you prepared to take this vow? 
then individually answer and I will call you by name and you then answer yes with the help of God. Leonora Klein. Yes, with the help of God. Olga Meyer. Yes, with the help of God. And Teber und Kunjane. Yes, with the help of God. Rainer Schütz. Yes, with the help of God. You now are commissioned as the uh, Sorry, apologies, Horst. From us, Elisabeth Rommelsbacher also needs to be commissioned. Uh, okay, thank you. Elisabeth, are you prepared yes. to... Yes, with the help of God. Thank you. And, and apologies. From, sorry, yes. that I interrupt, but I also uh, need to be uh, commissioned. I was at the Synod, but I was not delegate. I was, uh, but, but when Hugo Filter retired, uh, Thank I, you, I, I'm a delegate. Can I then ask you, do you take that vow? Yes, I take it with the help of God. Thank you, Rüdiger. Is, and Elke, and you're... Zygrun Reed. Zygrun, can I then ask you, are you taking that vow? Yes, with the help of God. Thank you. Thank you very much for pointing that out. And now I want to say a short prayer. Lord, we thank I wasn't you that we open ourselves to you, and we pray that you will bless the rest of the Senate. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 You can now unmute, uh, mute yourselves again, and uh, we can proceed from here. Thank you very much. Um, Elka, I see your hand is still up. Okay, thank you. Yeah, please all mute yourself um, because we did have some background noises there. I just uh, got a message. Tanya Wichmann sends apologies. She actually um, has to go, go for test due to illness um, and she can't make it, unfortunately. Also, I got uh, apologies from Ronald Kusel. He's not a Senate delegate, but he would, would have attended the, um, the YouTube link um, and he wishes us well and he can't make it this morning. Anna, could you please announce if we have established a quorum? Yes, uh, we have established a quorum. We now have 67 people who are present and our quorum is established at 40. So we do have quorum. Thank you very much. We will now do a test poll uh, so that we're all familiar with the voting. Please note that we will keep the votes as secret as possible. There is no possibility to guarantee that any digital voting process is 100% secret. So we will do our best. Nevertheless, under normal circumstances, we would have voted with our green, red, and blue cards. And we would therefore have done it by show of hands. So therefore our normal voting for financial matters would not be secret. So it actually doesn't change significantly. We will allow a reasonable time to allow for polls. Should some delegates not have voted after this time period, any outstanding polls will be taken as spoiled votes and added to the abstentions. I would now like Horst to um, try a poll, a test yes. poll. You will just now, as I launch the poll, you will uh, see it appearing on your screen. Uh, I'm launching it now. Um, it's a very simple question. Uh, this is just a trial so that we can all try it out. Um, the question is today is Saturday 9, October 2021. And uh, you can say, I agree, yes or you can say no, or you can abstain. Uh, I can on my screen see uh, the answers as they come in. And I will, um, as the answers come in, uh, just give you an indication. Um, so, for, so far, we've 
got 47, 48 answers coming in. So they're coming. If you don't see it on your screen, you can just say that you're not seeing it, but you should be able to see it. If for some reason you don't, at the bottom of your screen, there's a little uh, taskbar and in roughly in the middle, there's polls. Uh, if you click on that, you should then be able to see the poll. At the moment, we're standing on 61. So there are a few that uh, haven't voted yet. I will give 30 more seconds. So if you haven't voted, please do so now. Dieter Clear has raised his hands. Dieter. All fine. Uh, it wasn't clear to me what Horst meant, but I figured it out myself. Okay, thank you. You can drop your hand again, please. According to my count... Hol Holger Myers says he can't see the poll. Holger, can you see the... If you can see the uh, bottom, the uh, um, taskbar at the bottom of the screen, uh, it starts on the left with mute, stop video, security, participants, and then there's polls. Uh, then you click on polls, and then you should be able to see the, the poll. If you still can't see the poll, uh, you can also then, uh, um, by clicking on the reactions, uh, click on yes or no. Um, then it's visible to everybody. And the last option is uh, the, uh, to, to, to in the chat say that I agree or say in the chat yes, and then we see it with your name. <clears throat> and come right here, I agree. Thank you. Okay, I'll keep looking for the poll function, but uh, in the meantime, I, I, I can't see it. Heino, um, could you just go through the chat and give us feedback there? I see there are some comments um, in the chat. Okay, you have answered. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. President, I will now close the poll. Uh, we've got 64 uh, responses. There are four that uh, didn't come right uh, with, with that. So I'm going to end the poll now and then again to announce the results. <clears throat> I share the screen and there you will see a percentage. Now that percentage isn't always 100% correct because of those who could not uh, log in. So I read the final results. Uh, the yeses were Five. 60. The <coughs> no were two. And abstentions were eight. At this stage, I also just like to add that both the host and co-host, which are Bishop Müller and Anna Kaduma Gumbi, you are both um, hosts, cannot vote using the poll, so their votes uh, will be manually added. They will communicate via WhatsApp, and uh, so the percentage will also be slightly different to the final count because of these two votes, which will be added manually. I think we are then all ready to go on to the finances. Thank you very much for the patience, for the roll call and everything. It does take a bit longer if it is done virtually than normally. And I'd like to hand over to our treasurer, Vernon Filter. Uh, thank you, Henning. Um, I just want to share screen. Um, can you see the screen being shared? 
Yes, thank you. Thank you, Vernon. Uh, is my um, uh, audio better today than it was uh, in the two previous sessions? Um, yeah, I'm just waiting for this weird 30 seconds where you have to wait for the system to actually react before I carry on. Um, good morning, Mr. President and uh, Bishop and uh, all the Senate members. Um, uh, it is strange times that we have to go through to actually sit here, don't see each other face to face, um, but that's the card we have been dealt, and we actually have to um, do it on that basis. Um, sorry, I'm just still waiting for that 30 second um, time. Uh, today in the finance section, we will basically deal with two major items. One is the report back for 2019 and 2020, uh, and then the second portion being the, uh, the budget uh, leading into the church law one, uh, which then forms part of the church law uh, for the next two years. Uh, so I'm still stuck, Henning. Don't know what's happening. Just click the screen with the mouse on the presentation to see if that helps. Yeah, there's working. There uh, just just a uh, interruption. I've just got a message that Holger Maul is on the Zoom session, and according to our information, Holger Maul is not a delegate. As we are voting, um, we only want delegates to be on the Zoom session. Any non-delegates, in this case, Holger, um, please uh, go onto the listen on the YouTube channel. Otherwise, we will not have a, a control on who's voting and who's not voting. And then I will paste the YouTube link in the chat uh, so that uh, so that whoever um, wants to also share it, the YouTube uh, chat is open to, uh, uh, the YouTube uh, uh, link is open to all visitors. So um, I will share it on the chat. Um, and then you can also share it. And uh, Holger, you can use that link to uh, then uh, go onto the YouTube. Then you can listen in uh, to the Senate live. And uh, um, then the, the uh, attendance register is correct. Okay. Thank you. So this is the um, agenda for today. Um, Still struggling. Um, first, I want to start with um, what I call uh, our brag list. Um, the achievements from 2017 up until now, um, going with purpose. Um, the biggest achievement probably for us is um, the post-retirement medical li liability, which is now funded and the investment is moved to a separate fund. Um, the calculated shortage reduced from 7.4 million in 2019 to an estimated 3.9 uh, at the end of 2021. And uh, if our proposals in the budget is uh, approved or accepted, uh, we would wipe out the shortage uh, entirely and uh, this would actually reduce contributions by the, um, the congregations. Um, we restructured uh, retirement and risk benefits together with the ELC pension fund. Carmen Westermeyer is now, um, who's my deputy, she is on the trustees and um, we are quite con confident that uh, um, we are doing good work there and the benefits are to the benefit of all. Uh, the Ende Endeavor Farm in Hermansburg that was left to the DAS, uh, to the Hermans, uh, to the uh, Nelksa at the time by the um, mission uh, was sold, and we created a five million rand fund. Uh, and the past half past this post in Hermansburg Schule is now self-funding out of that. 
uh, accounting and uh, administration was streamlined uh, quite substantially. Financial reporting is now done on a monthly basis. And we were also able to reduce the bookkeeper's post to a 60% post, uh, saving some costs in that regard as well. Um, the arrears contribution uh, came down uh, quite nicely uh, in uh, 20, uh, up until 2018, 2019, we had some problems again. Um, and uh, since then, the, con the arrear contributions increased uh, as well. Uh, up, and we have about the 1 million rand centered into in free congregations in the um, central region. Uh, we have then also central circuit. We have also new arrangements with the West Rand congregation. Uh, and I will speak to that further um, later on. Um, we also, as mentioned earlier, moved the investment to a new asset manager, PSG Wealth, uh, with a much higher foreign exposure, and this resulted in much better returns uh, to the benefit uh, as well for, for the church, and I'll speak to that also a bit later. Um, we planned the new office in, uh, in Nelksa, uh, for Nelksa at the Johannes Gemeinde, uh, that was forced by the situation at the Kempton Park um, office block, um, and this turned out to actually be uh, a blessing in disguise because what we feared actually happened, uh, cut off electricity and that sort of thing. Um, it also allowed us, uh, with the help of, of um, COVID in a certain sense, the lockdown, to actually uh, move into a virtual office situation much easier. Um, uh, House Condorcer, uh, that area, we rezoned for business and we sold the property. Uh, we still have the, uh, the money or the proceeds in the uh, House Condorcer fund and we assisted out of that we assisted an renovation and upgrading of the Kai Lager security which is very important for us as a church uh, we also last year um, just before the COVID uh, and during the COVID decided to sell the Kempton Park properties the two properties so that we can utilize that asset much better rather than being a dead asset sitting and uh, doing nothing um, and uh, we will hear later in the budget how we uh, plan or ask to utilize those um, proceeds. Um, we also reduced the contents of the vault in the old office, which is um, the only uh, office or space that we still rent. Um, and and we transferred the documents into the cloud. And as you can see here in the little picture, the ladies packed the, uh, the cupboard. Um, I shot it into the clouds and Horst is looking on from the left. Um, a high level summary of the 2020, uh, 19 and 2020 uh, results. Um, and as you know by now, we have got them basically in the three sections. Um, pastors in service. Uh, um, our budget uh, in 2020, zero. And we um, over-recovered 124,000. And in 2019, this was still a misallocation of the budget at that point in time, but we also had a, a, a slightly over recovery in that year. The net church running cost, um, especially for 2020, a 612,000 uh, over recovery. And the main reason for that is um, uh, the lockdown, COVID lockdown. We, uh, we then moved out of our offices. Um, uh, traveling was a big saving here because uh, um, uh, nobody could travel. We held many of the church council meetings virtually, um, and uh, there's a lot, lot of cost savings in there. Um, 
the profit and the sale of the the two properties, 4.2 million rand, that was unbudgeted and unplanned for. And then the net investment income, that's the gross um, investment revenue, less the allocation to the various funds. Um, we, we had a very good 2019 and a reasonable 2020. And that left us with a surplus of a million rand in uh, 2019 and 5.3 million rand in 2020. Um, we, in 2019, we allocated 500,000 to the property fund. Um, that was basically to reduce the cost of the planned own office. And I'll speak to that one a bit later as well. Um, which will benefit the congregations going forward. Um, we left 500,000 as um, retained because that's basically the loss we made in 2018. In 2020, um, we uh, allocated the 4.2 million of the property into the property fund and uh, are making proposals today to utilize um, that into uh, the medical uh, savings going forward. And then we took um, what was left, uh, 900,000, 915,000 of that, and allocated it into the medical prefunding um, fund, which will also uh, benefit all the congregations going forward because that uh, contribution into the costs of the pastors in service will also reduce. The detail of the pastors in service, um, which was uh, a, a positive here in 2019 and also in 2020. And as you can see, um, the vacancy adjustments was quite much higher than budgeted in 2019, which also meant that the salaries for the pastors in service um, were, were down. And the same happened here in 2020, um, uh, leaving us with, with that break, basically break even. And as you know, in the budget, we planned to break even in that regard. Uh, the church running cost, this is now the more detailed. I've added the 2021 figure in there. Um, and this is up until June 2021, just for to, to get a feeling where we are. Um, the Bishop cost to company and housing was actually lower than um, the budget in both years, uh, saved on, on, on the housing. Traveling and accommodation, you can see here, uh, 2019, 400,000 budget, uh, and it was under budget, and here it was uh, way under budget, and this is basically the COVID uh, situation. The office costs, um, which uh, uh, include the salary of the two ladies and also the rental cost of the office, electricity, uh, and and the, the sort. Um, Co-worker training we budgeted for, but uh, money wasn't spent. It's a it's it's a situation that I we discussed at church council to see how we can utilize those funds, which are important funds, more uh, um, going forward. Um, the membership fees are basically as budget, and the circuits are, are also as budgeted. Um, and as you can see here. Um, 3 million rand budgeted, 2.7, 2.8 million actual spend. So there's a 200,000 saving in there. 3 million budget, basically 300,000 saving in there. So um, from our side centrally, we are trying uh, to spend as little as possible in that regard. Um, the set of income against this is um, the solidarity contributions. In 2019, um, and I just want to make a point here. Uh, we all make the 
Freudian slip of talking about solidarity fund. Um, we have some time ago as the church council um, purposefully renamed this to solidarity contributions, which is a subtle but important different uh, from solidarity fund. Um, and uh, in the 2020 budget, we reduced these contributions and we actually got in more than we budgeted for. And we thank everybody for those additional contributions that we got in that regard. The EKD grant, um, this is basically just the exchange rate. We budgeted for a certain exchange rate and we got the money in at a higher exchange rate. Um, and then we got some funds in from uh, estates and other interest, uh, uh, other income, small amounts, which then left us with an over recovery in 2019 of 361 and in 2020 of 612,000 rand. Year to date, um, it's also looking uh, good. The, the <laughs> Traveling and accommodation is still an issue that is coming down. The office costs we have now since 20, since December 2020 moved out of the offices. We don't pay rent anymore, so that cost will also come down. Investment. Um, sorry, apologize. Investments. Um, as you can see on this line here, um, 2020, 2017, 2018, we had a very bad year. 2019, a very good year. We recovered quite a lot. We we have more. We have one and a half times what we budgeted for. We got in. Um, 2020, uh, the actual is double of the budget uh, that we had in that year. Um, and as you can see down here, I indicate the percentage returns that we had versus the, the budget. And um, we are very proud of this. And this allowed us then to do certain things, allocate to the medical prefunding liability and, uh, and the sorts um, so that we can uh, utilize this to the benefit of, of, of the whole church. Um, solidarity offerings, uh, uh, offerings and solidarity contributions over the time. I'm just showing this in the graphical format. Um, the compulsory co collections um, had a downturn in recent uh, time, 2019 pre-COVID. And obviously this is a COVID uh, effect, um, 2020 and 2021 year to date. You see that blue uh, dot um, is the solidarity run that we um, had because of COVID. Um, and that was a very good initiative. I think it brought the congregations and, and our church together. The 700,000 Rand that we received there, uh, we didn't throw into the pot of solidarity. We kept that separate. We have allocated those funds to what the church council believes um, uh, uh, congregations that are, are, uh, are worthy of receiving that, worthy in the sense of they are really struggling and whatever, and we've paid it out in two tranches. Um, there is still 200,000 Rand left of that, and uh, the church council is, um, gonna, is going to allocate that to uh, two, two congregations going forward because we believe the, the whole COVID thing is, uh, is, is rather a longer effect than a short effect. So we still got 200,000 of that left. Um, these are the movements in the prescribed and recommended offerings. Um, just the uh, four funds are highlighted there to, to show the effect in time. And I'm just going to demonstrate church music. We started in 2019 with 287,000 and we ended up with 350,000. Now, we don't 
really spent much money in here. I mean, in 2021, no money has been spent so far out of that fund. Um, church mission, uh, we started with 1.9 and we ended with 2.2. Now, the money that we had spent in here with, with it, uh, basically the East Rand congregation and the Trinity congregation and that uh, allocation has uh, stopped at this point in time. So this fund has grown in that time. Theological education, we started with 540 and we are now at 400 basically. So um, the whole startup at the Stellenbosch again is draining this fund and we are, get, we are spending more than what we are actually getting in on this side. And the church youth, um, also the contributions or the offerings um, are, are, are turning down. And um, uh, so that fund has also been slightly depleted. Um, this is just for information and to uh, for a plea to actually um, for the congregations to give more in these critical theological education fund, I think is very critical. The youth fund is critical. Um, so that's just that obs observation. Um, uh, the, just a summary here. You've seen this all before. Uh, I just wanted to give you a September 2021. This is like uh, nine days ago. What our year to date standing is in here. Um, so you can get a feeling of uh, we are we are not going backwards or, or, or uh, we are not falling off a cliff as we are standing here. Pastors in service is a negative for 400,000. Now the reason for this is uh, we didn't increase for 2021 the contributions to uh, for pastors in service. We also, that was assisted obviously by the pastors not getting any increase but there are other uh, costs like medical uh, subsidies um, uh, and so forth which actually did go up uh, and that is why we actually have this loss the church running cost uh, uh, way positive because we can't uh, uh, we, we save on the on the on the rental we save on the traveling and uh, and also the uh, EKD grant has uh, come in early for, for one for three months. So that's actually increasing that. Vernon, in the, if I e can just yeah. interrupt for a second, um, yeah. if you could bring the microphone closer, you were louder early on and it's become a bit fainter. Um, okay. Thank you very much. Can you hear me better now? Yes, thank you. Yeah, it, it feels very strange speaking to yourself and no reaction from the other side. Um, then the investment carry, we also very uh, much positive. So we are uh, um, heading for a year that, uh, that we are going to have a surplus. Now, uh, what are we going to do with a surplus? The church council must obviously sit down once uh, the figure is known to decide how this surplus is going to be utilized. Um, are we going to give it back to the congregations in some way? Are we going to... Um, uh, pay some of us to the to congregations in solidarity and those sort of things, but uh, that we will discuss at the church council. Um, balance sheet, uh, I don't think it's um, uh, that critical that we look at the detailed figures here. As you can see, um, the, the property revaluation, we have sold those properties and that 370,000 is only the, uh, the non-distributable reserve that sits from the Kai Lager, which is now the only property that the church owns is, is that particular property in the Kai Lager plots. Um, our retained earnings have gone up and these are the various funds that we actually hold, uh, Transign funds, this, these are flow through funds, um, uh, mostly uh, the theological education, the mission fund, the music fund, those kind of funds, uh, specific reserves. The biggest portion of that is the old, um, or not, is the other funds from the Durban 
churches that were sold and uh, the fund for the Durban North or the uh, Dolphin Coast um, uh, church planting that we have there, the Hermansburg Schule Fund Reserve. And I just want to demonstrate here, we in 2019, um, we had 4.7 4 million. We paid for the half past the post and uh, the fund grew to 5 million and it's up to 5.1 million. So this fund at this point in time is self-sufficient paying for the half past this post in, um, uh, in Hermannsburg Schule. Um, now some medical prov provision uh, for the uh, post uh, pension um, has grown from 10 to 14 million. Um, and hopefully after the budget, this will be around 19 million. And then uh, the, sh the short calculated shortage has been wiped out. These are payables and provisions. Biggest portion of that is um, we make a provision for uh, past this transfer on a on an annual basis. And uh, in the budget, we have reduced this this year because we don't use as much as that as as we actually provision for. Um, and in the 2021 year is also provision for the bonuses that, that we pay in December. Um, uh, these are just, that was the, the fund side, this is the asset side, and you can see where our investments uh, are sitting at 41 million. And um, just to ensure assure everybody this 41 million is not money that we as the church have and just can spend on anything these are actually the funds that we hold in trust for those various um, uh, investment uh, those various uh, funds that we hold in trust for things like mission uh, um, Theological education, the, the the funds for Hermannsburg Schule and the and the medical funds, um, and this is just in the cash flow sitting, uh, the accounts receivable, um, which is the money in arrears that are owed by the congregations to us, sitting around around two point three two point four million. Um, just uh, that post-retirement liability funding. Um, in 2016, up until 2019, uh, the liability for the pensioners, the, the people who are in pension right now, is 6.8 million. The calculated uh, liability I calculated on a basis of, um, of 84 years uh, death age. Uh, the pastors in service 10 million so there's quite a big liability for the pastors that we currently employ the total liability 17 and uh, we contributed 7.5 million originally uh, in the meantime we've contributed uh, three years of um, uh, about a million rand a, a, a pop um, the growth in the fund was 1.6 million, that's the interest that we received, and we paid 2.2 uh, million to the pensioners, leaving us with a closing balance of 10 million, um, with a shortage of 7.3 million. In 2020, this was the movement, there's the extra 900,000 that we allocated, we had a very good growth in the fund, and um, the 700,000 is what we paid to the pensioners today. That shortage has reduced to 5.6. Uh, year to date, that shortage has reduced to 3.7. Um, and it's important that we keep this, it, as I always say to the church council, it's easy to take decisions, but you must know how you actually fund this decision, this liability that you've created going forward. And I'm just showing, uh, sharing with you the movement in 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 this um, calculation. Um, this is just a graphical uh, um, showing of what you've just seen. Um, we've started up here. Um, that was the fund balance going up the blue blocks, 
and that was for calculated liability. And if we go into 22, 23, hopefully that liability has been wiped out. Um, this is just the number of months um, of invoicing outstanding. So there's always, uh, if in total, about two months of, of contributions in arrears in total, if you look at the blue line, if you take basically Vestrand out, we are basically one month in area. So um, uh, at this point in time, uh, and it's gotten worse, and this is the actual uh, graph to look at, it's gone worse um, with that million rand worth of, of uh, arrears that we picked up in certain of the congregations. I'll talk to that in a little bit more detail. Um, uh, as this is a, a forum that uh, the total church has to have in, insight in. Um, I'm just showing here what the various uh, congregations owe at the end of the, very, the, the various years that we have. Um, in the central circuit, um, problem areas, East Rand, uh, and there's no pastor in there that 2019 was basically the pastor in po pastor's post that wasn't being able to be paid. Kempton Park has now in 2020 picked up a, a, a drag with COVID. Um, St. Peter's by the Lake, uh, 2019, 2020, uh, um, there's a problem there. There's no pastor there anymore. Um, Van der Bell Park has done quite well. The West Rand, we all know about this story. Um, and as you can see, uh, and I'll report back to that just now, uh, there's been quite a nice payback now. West Rand, new account, they're keeping up to date with that one. Um, Eastern Circuit, no problems in there. Uh, Northern Circuit, uh, no problems in there. Um, St. Peter's, a little bit of... Uh, of a hiccup that we had in 2020. Um, then in the Southern Circuit, we have Trinity Zululand, uh, which is also now um, without a permanent pastor. Uh, pastor Hugo Filter is, uh, or retired Pastor Hugo Filter is now helping out there, but they've also managed their problem down uh, quite nicely, um, leaving us with the total going up slightly at the, at the bottom. Um, then just quickly, uh, in the last Senate, we made the proposal or, um, Vestrand, uh, community church, uh, asked us to, um, to have this arrangement with him, uh, 10,000 random towards the old uh, debt. And then we would actually write down four and a half thousand to basically wipe out the old interest that was accounted for that. COVID hit and uh, there was difficulty in paying that. Pastor Falker in the meantime also left uh, uh, the congregation um, to accept a calling in, I think it's in Switzerland. And then the Corona uh, lockdown also hit. In May 21, um, eventually the, the, we received um, after some discussions with the council, uh, they decided to sell the properties, a property. We received a payment of uh, 229,000. Uh, this meant that although the 10,000 rand per month was not paid in total, a total of 415,000 has now been received for the 36 months, 2019, 2021 years. The church council agreed to still apply the conditional write down as the congregation did adhere to the proposal to liquidate some properties and paid the aggregate of more than 10,000 rand, uh, uh, 10, rand per month over the time. Um, and this is basically the calculation. As you can see, end of 2018, this was a 1.7 million problem. Um, and it's now only a 1.1 million problem. Um, and uh, we would also like the Senate to, uh, what's the word, condone this decision that we uh, took in this regard. 
All right. So thank you. Are, are there any questions at this point in time? Um, sorry, can I just do the following before I do the questions? Just um, uh, there's always a report back on the Gossman Trust. Um, uh, I just want to, and, and I've highlighted that first part. Um, Nelxa does not have a fiduciary control over the trust, as the trust is one that was formed in 2020, uh, in 2010. Um, sorry, it was actually 2000. And uh, there's an outside trustee, Mrs. Brown, who's the, who's the trustee. Um, at the end of December, um, the balance with us is 304,000 and we've paid 3,000 and 6,000 in the two years. The matter of a fiduciary control, we are still busy investigating at this point in time. Okay, Henning, now I'm back to questions and... and Thank you very much. If issues. anybody's got a question to the content, no comments yet or discussion, just questions of clarity, please raise your hand. And Heino, if there's anything in the chat, if you could then just bring that up from the chat. Thank you, Andy. While we waiting, if there's any questions, um, there's been some attendance issues that have been brought to my um, attention. Firstly, um, we had a, lost a few people, unfortunately, with load shedding, but we are still on 68 participants. Um, there is an Andreas who has joined. Um, Andreas, if you could maybe just add your surname. We are not sure. And we also got a Imke that has joined. Who is that? Oh, it's Eckhart Papa is joining through that. Okay, so we got Eckhart Papa is now part of the meeting. Anna, if you could add um, Eckhart Papa as attending. And An Andreas, does anybody know who that Andreas is? Andreas he has corrected. It's Andreas Risch. Oops, okay. okay. Thank uh, you very much. I've attended already since uh, five past nine. No, yes, I okay. did. Okay. Be... Present. I mark you present. I just wanted to know if it was you, Andreas. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, it doesn't seem like there are questions on clarity. Is there anything to be discussed? As would anybody like to discuss anything at this point of the meeting on what has just been presented? Uh -huh. The financial report. Ending, there is a question. Elizabeth. Uh, there is a question by uh, Jack Mahoro, Pastor Jack Mahoro, uh, in the chat. I see in that uh, congregations that Calvin is listed as arrears, and according to him, they should be in credit. In other words, that they that they shouldn't be in arrears. So that's. Can I, um, I uh, can I respond to that, uh, Jack? Um, that list is a complete list. It's not only the arrears, it's a complete list of, of all the congregations with uh, outstanding balances, zero balances, and also credit balances. So it, all it means is that uh, Calvin is paid in advance at that time. Thank you very much. Elizabeth, you got your hand raised. Yes, I'm um, just wanting to basically <coughs> make... Uh, comment as opposed to a question but if you want me to do that later i'm happy just let me know when i can pass you can comment. you can go ahead with the comment there don't seem to be any questions yes um the synod delegates of the uelc the uh, lutheran congregation united evangelical met to prepare for the synod meeting today and after working through the documentation that was sent out the group raised a few points for discussion in our preparations, and I was asked to share these two important thoughts with you. Firstly, uh, the financial reports were meticulously prepared in an understandable and an informative format, and we are very pleased for that, and the financial results of the church at the highest levels, especially in terms of the investment returns, were excellent. This reflects very well on the financial management of the church, and as representatives of our congregation, we would like to thank 
Church Council and the Finance Committee for their efforts, and particularly Vernon Filter for his commitment and leadership. It is much appreciated. Secondly, we do want to raise a concrete concern. Though the financial results at the higher levels and specifically in terms of the investments are excellent, a perusal of the financial results does raise a few red flags, mainly the arrears contributions table on page 19 of the Treasurer's report shows a few concerning increases in arrears, as has been alluded to by Vernon. Uh, of course, these congregations do have to take responsibility for their own affairs, and such congregations need to find concrete ways to address this concern, and if need be, be accompanied on a case-by-case -case basis, which may actually be happening, but we are not aware of this. However, it also seems to us that in addition to this, we as a church must consider these challenges and how we respond to them at a church level, and if need be, make some structural changes that help congregations in such situations to better deal with the challenges they face and or to help prevent congregations to fall into another debt trap in future. I would like to here allude to also to Bishop Miller's opening um, devotion, where he said we have to help one another and once somebody needs help and the second person helps, it can change. And I don't think that this needs to only be on a financial aspect. This needs to also be in a way where we can assist them how to address their finances. Um, our pastor, Pastor uh, Lutke, also informed us in preparation meeting that the church council has asked Pastor Mark Meyer to look into this in more detail and to put a team together to consider a process of looking into the, and responding to this challenge. We view this as a crucial step to ensure the continued sustainability and future development of our church. We support the high level response of our church leadership to this challenge and urge church council and the people involved to give concrete feedback and a full report to the Synod at its next meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. Um, those points are very important and very warranted. Uh, Church Council is looking at a lot of these issues. Um, we are very aware of these issues. I can just very briefly mention from my side, we just before COVID hit us, we actually allocated um, certain people to actually walk with these congregations to assist with mentoring. Um, unfortunately, COVID then overtook this whole thing and, and it became very difficult for time to actually continue with this partnering, mentoring of congregations that were in trouble. Uh, we have also got some of the congregations that are in, that uh, where the problems, financial problems really grew, where, which are at the moment without pastor. That is not an ideal situation, but we also could not allow a situation like West End to build up again where we actually end up with debt, which is very difficult to repay. Uh, I'd also like our bishop to maybe comment on these issues. Uh, Henning, yes, you, you said the most important things, uh, um, and I think the, the issue of the accompaniment uh, where the intention prior to COVID was that uh, um, specific people are requested to walk with a specific congregation because of the difference in the situations from congregation to congregation. Uh, yes, and then the lockdown came, and uh, um, I think in most cases this process then came to a standstill. Yeah, we, we also wear that, um, as much as you said, the the bigger church financial situation looks very good. And thank you very much for appreciating Vernon, Vernon's work and the work of the financial committee. We are also very aware that on the ground, it sometimes looks very different. different. And we are also looking at how we, we can really move on with congregations that are struggling, especially in this time of COVID. It's been a very difficult time for a couple of our congregations. Konrad Hartmann, you got your hand up. Please unmute yourself, Konrad, and possibly put on the video if 
you got enough bandwidth. Um, sorry, I just wanted to amplify a little bit on what the bishop has already said. We uh, we have four different congregations, totally different congregations with different problems. Ours is one of them. Um, by the end of this year, most likely our congregation will be positive again, but it will be uh, uh, it, it will not be real because we'd also be selling part, uh, some of our property. Um, the, but the income in our congregation due to uh, um, people paying their tenths is not, not sufficient to keep the congregation running with a pastor, not even near um but the we we have between our congregations started talks and with and and as, as at the moment there is no concrete uh, plan to get out of it but we are working on it we have got a committee in the central circuit that is also looking at the structures and models of congregations and they're working also on this issue. Alec Gumbi, please unmute yourself and if possibly show your picture. Um, thanks, Henning. I may have asked this question before, but uh, please excuse my poor memory. I can't remember what the answer was. What's the uh, Gossman Trust? Should I answer any? Yes, please. Um, Alec, it's a trust that was formed um, years ago out of a, a estate of uh, Mr. Gossman. Um, the funds were given, um, given, handed over to manage uh, to the then Elksa NT. Uh, the trustee of the trust is a Mrs. Brown, and it is for the benefit of the elderly and uh, and orphans. Uh, and we are getting in uh, requests from the congregations to support elderly and uh, and orphans, and we then pay uh, support out of that. Um, out of the proceeds of that trust. Now, the, so that's the basic background of the Gosman Trust. Thank you very much, you. Uh, Vernon, for that answer. Karl Tobler, please unmute yourself and if possible, show your face. Thank you. Yes, thank you. I have got two questions. The first one is regarding West Rand. Uh, if uh, Western hasn't got a pastor anymore. That means there shouldn't be any uh, debits to the Western congregation for the pastor from the church council. Uh, are there any other debits? Uh, well, there is the administration part for Nelksa. Is this the only portion which gets debited to the Western uh, congregation? Or if not, uh, then everything else should be covered internally by the congregation, uh, whatever expense they have. Is that true or false? It's, uh, Carl, it's correct. As you can see on the list, we, we have two accounts, uh, old uh, Westrand account and the new Westrand account. So there's no pastor in service charge to that account anymore. It's only the church running cost. And as you can see, they service the new account. And the old account is then where the debt is being paid down from. So that means uh, over time now the church council shouldn't experience any real debt anymore and the debt should be coming down as we can see on the Correct. report anyway. Yeah, okay. Correct. Thank you. The second question I've got is about uh, selling properties. Uh, lately I hear more and more about uh, congregations now today and before uh, selling properties and also Nelksa sells property. Um, what is your is the thinking behind it? Because we know once we've, we're selling our um, 
silverware, then there's nothing left. We use up the money and then we are probably worse off than before. Um, do we hope does it, that in the meantime, the contributions and the memberships are going up so much that we can live on the memberships again? I can maybe just comment on that. Um, property is not necessarily an asset. In some ways, it's actually a liabil liability. Um, firstly, you, we have got the situation of land gap or people squatting on the properties, um, which we had problems um, at times uh, on some of these properties. So we actually, in some way, are glad. Um, it, it's, it, it is a serious problem if people actually start squatting and uh, land gaming uh, your property, if it's a vacant land. Um, so yeah, and also these properties were purchased by our, yeah, we can say by our ancestors, by our parents and grandparents and, uh, as Vernon also highlighted in his speech, we also inherited this debt of the medical. So by actually using what was invested by our yeah, ancestors to actually pay for, if we can invert it, the sense of the ancestors for not actually making provision for the medical aid, um, it, it balances out quite well. But a property is not necessary asset unless you are actually building on it and unless you're occupying it. Can I, um, Henning, can I also respond to that? Uh, that's definitely Please. part of it. Um, many of our congregations um, have assets that cost them money. On a monthly basis, they pay for the rates and taxes, the maintenance whatever for but there's no use for those pro, for those properties necessarily i mean we in the Alks are set with those two properties um and they cost us uh, not huge money but they cost us a little uh, cash flow on an annual basis um but we felt by selling it taking the capital and investing the capital in in um, income yielding assets is much more beneficial um, uh, going forward and um, quite frankly in South Africa to earn to own property these days is a costly exercise it's a risky and a costly exercise and um, in my personal view uh, owning property is not necessarily the silver we rather take those, that capital and invest, invest it in a proper investment that yields you some revenue and that will become the silverware Thank you. In other Thank words, uh, we are talking about uh, congregations or uh, NELXA if, uh, about properties which was either underutilized or not utilized at all. Uh, so this congregation had the, uh, the luxury of having something they could sell. We're not talking about some essential uh, church ground or church buildings, etc. Correct. 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 Thank you. There don't seem to be any further questions. Oh, there's one more question by Conrad Hartmann. You are muted. In our congregation, we have three churches for, for a total of less than 300,000, less than 200,000 uh, members. So we have three churches and so our capital um, in, in the buildings is totally out, um, over the top for the congregation to, to be able to handle it. So we, we are in the process of looking at uh, dealing with our assets a bit more, um, a bit better. In the past, we had a much larger congregation and we had a much more, uh, a much bigger income stream. And it is time now to reassess our situation, um, which still means we don't have um, the, the income stream that uh, to be able to operate 
the way we've done in the past with a pasta, but uh, we're working on it. Dieter Klee. Yes, good morning, everybody. Um, just to uh, connect to what our delegate uh, Karl Tobler has said, I just want to add that we are right now engaging with a special AGM in November to identify different avenues for the future of Kempton Park congregation, which I will not explain to you in detail, but for like church council as well as synod members to realize that churches that are in need of finances have to now really, really to dig deep to find a possible way for the future. And we have engaged in that process and we would like Synod to prayerfully uh, uh, accompany those congregations that are in such process. Thank you so much. It's mainly, it's really appreciated. Thank you, Dieter. Um, I don't see any further hands. Heino, is there anything on the chat that you've been monitoring that you'd like to bring up? No, Ms. President, there's nothing. I can't see anything right now. Thank you. I would then suggest to have a short break, toilet and coffee break. Um, and if we could be back in about eight minutes time at 10. Mr. President, sorry, we need to yes. adopt the finance report. Oh, sorry. Yes, we need to adopt it. Thank you very much. Before we can have a short break, yeah. um, I'll, I'll hand over to our bishop who manages the poll from a technical point of view. Uh, yes. Uh, so you will now see on your screen the adoption of the finance report where you can uh, respond yes for adopting no if you don't adopt it and abstain. Uh, currently, the members, uh, the participation is fluctuating due to the uh, um, load shedding situation. Uh, so if you, um, well, of course, if you're not on the screen and if you're not logged in, you can't, can't vote. But uh, so you please uh, respond to the poll. If for some reason you don't see the poll and you can't activate it by clicking on the uh, um, bar at the bottom where it says polls and you still don't see it if you can then please just uh, um, in the chat uh, state yes no or abstain because in the chat you we will see then with your name uh, um, your response i give another 20 seconds because almost everybody present has now responded I will end the poll now. Mr. President, I'm glad to announce that it is unanimous, adopted uh, the um, finance report is adopted. Uh, and also from my side, thank you very much to our treasurer uh, for preparing that. And as we can see on the chat, also the comments that stated that it was very clear and easy to understand. Uh, so thank you very much, Vernon. Thank you very much. Um, as our treasurer will be having a load shedding at 12, I suggest we have a very short break of about seven minutes. Then we'll continue at about 10 to 11. Just a short toilet or coffee break. Um, you're welcome to share your coffee and your biscuits with everybody. Henning, sorry from my side, just quickly, thanks uh, to the church council, um, to the bishop and the support staff in the office for all the assistance that you have given me over time. And um, it's been uh, uh, an honor to, to work. Thank you. We'll be back in about seven or eight minutes.
Hay en ni. Henning, you muted. Oh, uh, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> just wanted to say uh, we'll give another minute or two and then we'll continue. Soll ich mein Screen so lange stehen, Henning? Ja, dann ist es äh, dann mit ist der schneller, Presentation ja. schneller. In diese 20, 30 Sekunden. Henning, ich denke, du solltest jeden bitten, dass er erst ähm, sich mit der Hand zurückmeldet, sonst, wird das, sonst weißt du nicht, ob er nur da ist. Ja, nee, das habe ich vor. Ja. Dankeschön, Andreas. Thank you, Andreas. Um, We'll wait one more minute. Is our bishop back? Yes, our bishop is back. I'd just like to request everybody uh, just to raise your hand so that we actually know that you are back. Raymond Rieselberg is back. Thank you. Anna, please note that Eileen Pieta is, uh, has put an entry in the chat. That she's able to log in successfully. Thank you very much, Aileen. I can't see all the participants. So, Horst, uh, Anna, you can see them all. Um, have we got a quorum? Anna? Not all hands are raised yet. Um, but have we got a quorum? I mean, you can just quickly count if we got more than 40. Not quite. We're still waiting for to, a few more hands to leave. And Mark over in the chat states that he will vote for to support the adoption of the proposed budget. Host, if you can maybe just note that. Yes, uh, thank you. Anna, okay. are you back? I can't see or yes, hear you, Anna. Your yeah, I'm back. Thank you. Anna, is Anna back? She's muted at the moment. Anna, if you can unmute yourself. She does not seem to be back. Alec, Alec are you back? Is your wife in the vicinity? <laughs> Oz, can you see if we got more than 40 people? I'll tell you just now. We've got 42. <clears throat> 42 hands are up. 42 hands are up. I think some hands have dropped again. Yes. We um, need to <laughs> I couldn't raise my hand, but I put a tick mark. Thanks yes. very much. Yeah. Um, I think we can proceed. So, um, We will, now we will now proceed with the budget for the year 2022-23, and I'd ask Vernon to please continue. Um, thank you, Henning, and um, welcome back, everybody. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, yes we thank can. you. Yes, yes. Okay, strange times we live in. Eh? We speak to each other over computers and we ask for money over computers. Uh, so as you all have seen this picture before, we have the various um, blocks of flow, uh, pastors in service, that's the main um, flow of funds. Uh, we in NELC sub pay for the uh, employer, the pastor, we 
pay for the cost of co to company for the pasta. We then also make provision for the medical pre-funding, which hopefully after this budget will be fully funded. We um, budget for the pastor's transfers cost, and that means if a pastor is um, transferred from one post to another, we pay for those moving cost. We budget for continuous professional development fees. Then we have the church running cost. This is the bishop and his cost, the vehicle replacement cost, the housing, traveling and accommodation, the office. We still plan our own office, uh, membership fees and circuit uh, um, contributions for the circuits to, to, to run. Um, and we also have co-worker training in there. The income that we set off against this is solidarity contributions, and I uh, highlight that again, contributions and EKD grant slash subsidy, which gives us the net church running cost. And those two together make up the total congregation contribution um, that we require. On this side, we have investments, less what is allocated to the various funds. And then um, this money is then shared uh, into the various funds and projects, and also some of it goes into reducing these costs. Um, the assumptions, and I'm not going to spend uh, a lot of time on this. Um, uh, these are the assumptions that basically I have used to budget going forward salary increases, although in 2021 we had zero salary increases. This was the budget, 21 budget um, assumption. So you can just have a, a, a starting point to, uh, to look against. Um, the medical uh, increases, 8%. Uh, um, the uh, rent, euro, uh, Exchange rate 17 against previously 15. The interest allocations um, with the interest rates uh, environment changing uh, recently, uh, instead of having a 2.5 and a 6%, we've made everything 3.5% uh, and, and we've been paying this for the last year in any event. The interest yield assumptions, 3.5%. Uh, um, this is basically the money market that we currently, money market rates, dividend yield uh, 2% and then the capital growth of 5%. Uh, solidarity contributions um, lower from uh, previous years with the whole COVID issue and whatever, I've, we've reduced that. Then this is quite a big one, uh, which is the allocation of the property uh, yield what we got for the property into the medical fund. And then we will, won't have any more post-retirement medical funding costed into the cost uh, of pastors. Um, and uh, this is just the same uh, basis. Um, the Pastor salary is based on the highest salary scale. And we, by the way, we only have two pastors which are not on the highest salary scale. So our pastors are getting to the older side, it looks like. Um, and in 20 uh, coronavirus and the no increase for the pastors and other staff in 21 means a reset for 2021. So there was no increase um, between 2020 and 2021 to the congregations on this. We kept uh, everything the same. Um, and as I said before, we propose to utilize um, the, the proceeds from the property into um, the, the, the medical liability fund. Um, past this housing, transport, communication is budgeted and paid for by each congregation and each congregation is different. Uh, so that's how the various, um, uh, the cost of pasta is actually made up of. So this portion here comes through NELXA or central uh, uh, fund. And this is paid by each congregation on its own. Um, 
so as you've seen before, um, this is that uh, proceeds uh, of the medical liability fund, and you will, we will probably end up with a shortage of about 3.9 million in 2021. And so if we don't allocate anything further, we will keep on carrying this liability. And this is just for demonstration. Um, uh, what we want to do is we sold those two properties, 23 and 27. Um, the considerations was the uncertain coronavirus and lockdown held the threats of land invasions. And we had threats of land invasion and uh, non-income yielding assets with no uh, other immediate options that we had. The cash funds um, yielded from this is 4.238 million. Um, and, uh, you know, we want to allocate this to the post uh, retirement medical fund. And as Henning alluded earlier, you know, it's our forefathers that gave us this asset, this property, but it's also our forefathers that gave us the liability. So I think it's quite fitting to take the assets from our forefathers to pay for the liabilities of the forefathers. Um, so if we then allocate this 4.2 million here, you will see it turns into the shortage turns into a surplus. And um, uh, obviously uh, this is the liability is planned on an 84 year uh, death rate or death age. Um, but we all know that people become much older than that these days. So we can't just, um, utilize that we must keep it uh, uh, going and hopefully we wouldn't have to contribute so in future to this anymore uh, it will carry itself um, so um, a standard past this post uh, for 2021 this is what the per annum cost would be um, in 22 this is what it would uh, become which is a reduction of 1.6%. And the major reason for this is this 51,000 that actually now gets zeroed out here. And then in 23, we have the normal 6% increase again, which is the assumptions that, uh, that we took. Um, and as you can see here, this is how the, uh, the pastors in service increased in the past few years. This was just a funny because the allocation in 17 was slightly different. 6.1 in 2019, 7%. And then we budgeted for a 6.5% increase, but that obviously was reset here. Um, and now we are budgeting for a decrease and then a slight increase again. Um, So this is the uh, cost to pass this recovery. Um, we invoice that line to the congregations and those numbers that you've seen per pastor uh, multiplied by the number of congregations gives you this top line. Uh, we have vacancy adjustments um, because uh, and the reason we do it like this is because the congregation still has a pastor's post, but it's vacant. Uh, so it's we, we calculate the gross number. Um, the youth pastor, which is now Rene Rush these days, is um, uh, there's an additional uh, that quarter post actually just gets allocated separately. It gets taken out of there. Salaries passed us in service, that line item. And as you can see here, the transfer cost, uh, we provided 400,000 last year and uh, I've halved that figure because there's not many pastors being transferred these days anymore. And then we've got continuing professional development budget of 100,000 um, in, in here. And uh, this is for our pastors to be sent on courses, seminars, um, whatever the case might be. Um, then we have the 
church running cost, net church running cost, as I also as I already alluded, this is all the cost that goes into it. This is what is set off against it. Um, we uh, the issues that we are considering here. Uh, we have a new Nelksa building still planned at Johannes Gemeinde. The problems that we had there first is the is the infighting in the politics between the ANC and the and the DA and the offices of the plans being approved not operating. Um, we have also in the meantime learned that a virtual office is quite possible. So that's one of the positive things that uh, uh, Corona has um, uh, taught us. There's a reduced vehicle replacement provision. Horse can't travel that much anymore. Um, there's some co-worker training and the as I already said, the past is uh, transfer cost reduced. Um, I'm not going to spend detailed on, on here. Um, just to say that in December 2020, we vacated the Kempton Park office um, and we are operating on a virtual basis since March 2020 in any event. The vault is still being rented for from Elksa on a six monthly basis until we can uh, then have a planned offices in uh, Johannes Gemeinde and uh, move the stuff that is still in the vault over to the new vault if that eventually happens. Um, also uh, in the reduced cost is the bookkeeper post, which is also now only a 60% post. Um, the church running cost um, broken up into per congregation. So those are the congregations for 27.85 um, is then allocated in the various years into this per congregation cost, I think is quite important to look at it. So the total cost per congregation to run the the church office is 104,000, 109,000. We set off against it the EKD grant. So effectively, the and this is what we also tell the EKD, is um, each congregation gets that amount allocated to them from the EKD. Um, and then this is the solidarity contribution that then gets allocated to um, to each congregation, which means that's the amount to be paid then to support the rest of the cost per congregation. Um, I thought it was quite important perhaps to show this in a, uh, in a way, this is, and I'll, I'll deal with it per congregation, this is how the various costs actually build up uh, to a total cost of 104, then it, the EKD grants reduce it before solidarity, that would be the cost. And this is when the solidarity that uh, uh, reduces it further to leave us with a 27. So it's visually quite important to see how this gets built up and then gets broken down or reduced then by, by the, the two elements, EKD and solidarity. Um, and this is for 2023, the same picture. Um, it's effectively the same uh, 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 visual element that you see in front of you. Um, this solidarity, uh, and I specifically mentioned today, it's solidarity contributions, voluntary contributions or whatever. So it's important to just make this point, keep on making this point all the time. Um, if, the, if a congregation does not um, give at least 26,000 in 2022 and 28,000 in 2023, you are being subsidized and you are not subsidizing uh, somebody else. Now, this is a, a mute point all the time. And I, uh, I, I go through these issues with the church council and I get calls quite often and they mostly happen around this time when we do the budgets um, 
but I sense that if I speak to people in the congregations, this information somehow doesn't reach the people on the ground, the con congregants on the ground, to understand the solidarity contributions, to, to say that, uh, you, you know, you are also getting something out of a congreg out of a solidarity, you are getting that 26,000 rand out of a solidarity, because somebody else is paying it. And if you don't pay it, somebody else has to pay it. And I think it's important that we get the message out and, and talk more about this, uh, this contribution. And perhaps one can change the name. We have debated this name change very, very often within church council. And after two hours, we come back and say, okay, let's just leave it the way it is because <laughs> we, we can't decide on what it is to be. Um, the uh, investment income yield, um, I think I have uh, budgeted relatively conservative. The, the interest yield is currently already 3.5 and perhaps going to go up next year, uh, 2023. Dividend yield is more or less what it currently is. The capital growth is obviously where the risk is. Up until now, the capital growth has have been much more than the 5%. And that's, you know, if we knew exactly what it was, uh, we, we, we would budget that exact amount. But this is where the, the, the risk basically sits. Um, the investment carry uh, budgeted going forward, then this is just the historic. You've seen that before. Um, you get, uh, we budget 2.2, 2.1 million. And um, then it's allocated. Obviously, now the, the allocation to the medical fund will be much higher because there's been a 4.2 million uh, inject injection in capital into that fund, leaving us with a buffer or a, an amount to play with of 349 and 328,000 in, in, in that particular year. Um, the summary income statement, um, and it's important uh, to make the point that uh, for the pastors in service, we budget a zero budget, meaning that we plan to recover everything from the congregations for each pastor's post for what we spent. Obviously, our spending budget is not always 100% accurate which is why you see these differences uh, um, in the actuals uh, in earlier years. Exactly the same for the church running cost. We plan to only recover what we, what we spent. Um, this item is not budgeted for going forward. And then the investment income less the allocation, what I call the investment carry is then um, the buffer because it could be that we spent more on one side uh, um, and, and that's basically the budgeted surplus for those two years, 349 and 328. Um, what is the effect, the summary if, impact on the congregational contributions? In uh, 2021, there was a reset, meaning there was a 0% increase from previous year. This 2022, so next year, there will be a decrease of 2.1%. And that's actually a decrease versus the 21 budget of 8.6. Now, um, this is definitely not all, my, all our doing. It's uh, the pastors who didn't get increases uh, assisted hugely to that or mostly to that. And that would then be the, the balance in 2022. And then in 23, we have a 6% increase and a church running cost increase of 13%. So this is just the graphical uh, um, picture of what I'm telling you now. And I also want to point out that the, um, the cost that the church charges or puts through to each congregation is mostly the yellow part, the pastors in service. The blue part is a very small percentage. So it is all driven by the pastor on the ground. Um, and I'm not blaming the pastors for the increase, but if the congregation has and wants a pastor, that is unfortunately the cost that has to come from, uh, from that uh, 
source. So uh, a typical invoice um, to the congregation uh, would be, and I'm dealing with a 2022 year now, the cost of a pastor in service, 52,000 Rand per month, plus the net church running cost. So that would be the sort of fixed invoice that the congregation receives on a monthly basis. Obviously, if you don't have a pastor in service, we will put through a vacancy adjustment and it's only that 2,300 that will be charged. Um, and then your the expected hurdle solidarity contribution would be a, a 2,244. Uh, 2, so um, to the full contribution would then be 56,000 if you your contribution can contribute that solidarity. Um, I know this is this solidarity is always a, a big issue. Um, uh, Rainer Fokker recently um, in his new congregation in Augsburg explained this to the to the people uh, to the congregants and um, and he says and I've spoken to the to congregants as well and they say they understand it better so I'm going to try it now. Congregation A has 300 members. Um, and this was still last year's cost, 54,000 Rand divided by 300 is 180 Rand per, 82 Rand per member. The congregation that has got 100 members has to pay three times more to keep that congregation afloat. Um, and uh, which just means the longer we can keep the smaller congregations afloat, assisting them, um, because the costs don't get less, they just get divided by less congregations, um, the better for the church at the end of the day. All right, uh, Henning, that's me. Um, can I just say after the, uh, sorry, one thing I forgot, after the um, two preparations meetings, there was um, two, or one error basically that slipped in, which was for 2023 contribution schedules. My Excel spreadsheet still looked into 2022 when, uh, when I calculated that figures. And as I always say, if you work with an Excel spreadsheet, you know there's a mistake. You just don't know where it is. So thanks for um, uh, Elke, you and the, the Krondal um, treasurer pointing that out to me, but that has been corrected in the meantime. So the final uh, budget, which is a long written document that was sent out, has corrected those uh, those issues. So um, uh, I leave for questions and issues now before we then go into the church law one. Yes, are there any questions? Any questions on content before we come to discussion? Any questions on content? Heino, was there anything that uh, you picked up? Um, questions on content on the chat? Uh, no, Dieter Clear had a question, but he was through it in the meantime. Okay, thank you. Then we come to general comments or discussion points. Uh, if there's anything, please raise your hand or put it into the chat, preferably change, raise your hand. I don't see any raised hand at the moment. Uh, Andrew, three hands on. raised, uh, Henning. Okay, I don't see them. If you could maybe just um, pick them up for me. Who's the first one? Andrew B. Andrew B, please, could you uh, state your comment or make a point? Uh, Yes, thank you. Um, the representatives of our congregation, that's the ULC, um, would like to raise a point regarding the name Solidarity Contributions. Um, it fits in with some of the comments that Vernon made earlier. Um, in recent times, it has become clear that this name causes a lot of confusion and obscures what this payment is actually for. 
We would therefore like to present a motion to change this name. We've discussed this with the president of Synod, and after those discussions, we recognize that it would be better to present this motion to the next in-person Synod, which God willing will be in 2022, so that the name change can be properly prepared and discussed. We would therefore like to notify Synod today that we will present a motion with a suggestion for a name change to the Solidarity Fund for Solidarity Contributions for discussion and adoption at the Senate meeting in 2022. Thank you. Thank you very much to UELC. Um, just a slight comment uh, or correction that it is actually not the next Senate, it is the continuation of the present Senate. Uh, so what is hopefully going to happen in October next year is a continuation of what, of what we're doing now. It is part of exactly the same Senate. Um, please send us your motion once you've actually um, written it out so that it can be distributed to all congregations in preparation for the continuation of the synod. Thank you very much. Thank you. Then I see um, raised hand Elizabeth Rommelsbacher. Yes, thank you. Um, I'm a bit nervous about the percentage and the dependency on the AKD. I think the ECAD is a nice to have as opposed to a need to have. Because I think if one is aware of the situation in Germany, that the church is also starting to struggle there, I think we have to really look at weaning ourselves of the ECAD uh, contributions. And as I said, rather have it as a nice to have than a need to have. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. We are aware of that. We have in the past often been informed that this amount will be reduced and possibly even taken away at some stage in the future. We don't know. We we at the moment budgeting also reasonably conservatively with the exchange rate, but it's noted. Thank you very much for that comment. Uh, Vernon, do you want to say anything on this? Yeah, um, it's uh, Elizabeth. It's a it's a difficult and unknown thing. I, I just want to perhaps tell the story again, which some of you have heard, and uh, but it's always good to say it again. Some, uh, I think it is now three years ago, and uh, COVID time moved so quickly, where um, we were under big scrutiny by um, the ECAD. We had a big delegation, and some of you met them. Um, of the EKD, I think they were 14 or 16 people, uh, and we took them around at our congregations, and they visited congregations, and um, they came with with um, a, a view that um, this shouldn't be a partner church of this, this. I think that's the view that they came with, but I can say, and Horst can perhaps also comment on that, they flew back to Germany with a completely different view of what they saw on the ground. So we feel that that visit they had and our presentations to them bought us some more time on it. Um, but sure, uh, we have always got to be careful on, on, on that amount. Thank you, Vermin. Horst, do you want to say anything on this matter? No, I, I think it is correct. Uh, and um... Part of the reasoning for us still receiving that grant is that uh, when there are German expats, uh, um, they, they uh, at least some of them become members in our congregations or are cared for by our congregations. Um, <clears throat> so that is the, the argument behind us still receiving that fund. Um, and I agree with Elizabeth that uh, we need to, uh, if we reach a stage where, where we are not dependent on it, uh, that would be ideal because um, it, it could stop all, almost overnight. And as you know, as you have seen, it depends on the exchange rate quite a lot. And uh, so it varies extensively. Thank you. Can I just, can I just say something else, uh, Elizabeth? The other, the other matter you have to keep in, in, into account, it's one of these self-fulfilling prophecies if you say to the ECAD, well, we are not dependent on you anymore, then we'll stop giving it to you. So it's better to tell them we are dependent on you and they hopefully keep on giving it to us. 
Thank you. We then got a raised hand by Dieter Klem. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank you, um, Vernon. I'd just like to comment on your observation that you get phone calls and that the information about uh, solidarity fund purposes is not really sinking down in maybe some congregations. Um, I would like to make a suggestion. Um, I find it difficult to explain to congregation members that they first have to pay back a loan that they did not ask for, which is generously given to them, but they not, did not ask for it. And then after that, they can make contributions to really solidarity. Uh, wouldn't it not be a, a, a much easier route to make it optional so that congregations can opt for either receiving the grant from EKD or leave them with NERXA in order to, to support others. So then they would have a zero scratch where they then can say, okay, and still we want to support solidarity. Uh, the idea that one is being supported by not being asked and then asked to please pay back what you are supported makes some members of mine a bit confused. And, and that is, I think, where we need a little bit of an easier way. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dieter. Vernon, do you want to comment on this? Yeah, I think, uh, Dieter, with respect, um, uh, what, the, what I heard is um, the confusion is not between EKD and uh, solidarity. The EKD money we get and we allocate it to each congregation. Uh, the, the hurdle um, rate, and perhaps I must just do this, uh, go up. Hopefully I can go up. Um, the, the hurdle rate is about congr is, is about solidarity. Um, solidarity is the money that is paid by, by other congregations, by larger congregations. So if you can't give that portion of it, if you can't give solidarity, then other congregations will pay for you. What we do is we show you that the hurdle rate is the amount where you actually jump from being subsidized to subsidizing others. So that's the only thing. So it's no loan from the EKD or anything like that. It's just a demonstration of a level where you are either being subsidized or, or subsidizing others. Thank you, Vernon. Um, I would I'd like to ask Alec Gumby. Uh, you got your right hand raised. Please unmute yourself. Yes, thank you, Annie. Uh, I just wanted to make a comment on the, uh, uh, shall we say, uh, difficulty for people to contribute, and maybe because they're not aware of the requirements uh, for the funding. Uh, I think it's uh, incumbent upon each one of us as um, senior reps to go back to our circuit to go back to our congregations and make a concerted effort to explain to the congregants, uh, even show them diagrammatically, as Venom has shown us here, the flow of funding, particularly the main ones, which is the, uh, the pastor's salary and um, uh, solidarity. Just to say to people, look, th these are the minimum that we need as a congregation to raise, to be able to meet our obligation. And I, I, I'm a strong believer in that if people are properly informed, uh, those who are able to contribute will contribute. You know, when you look at what's happening with this crowdfunding, you know, a radio station comes up and says, there is this need, people come in and they contribute. And I would like to think that the same can happen in a congregation if people are continuously reminded and ex uh, things are explained to them such that they they can see the need that's how uh, you know uh, that's what i would like to leave with the uh, delegates go back to your places and explain to your congregants thank you thank you very much alec yes your role as senate member is extremely important because you are supposed and you generally do feedback this information to your congregation and the better it is communicated the better also the understanding and the better hopefully also the income.
Kibo and Konyane. Please unmute yourself. Tebo, you got your hand raised. Hi, please speak. Tebo. Um, yes, so, sorry, I was trying Thank to you. unmute myself. Super. Uh, Super. It's a clarification. I saw on the budget line where the pastor's salary is it seems like it's a flat fee for every pastor in all congregation. My question is, um, shouldn't that differ according to the year of service or employment that the pastor has? Does it mean that a new pastor would end the same as a pastor who has had 10, six years, 15 years service? I think our okay. treasurer will answer that question. Table, thanks for that question um we the budget we do is um we budget on the maximum meaning the oldest pastors level and the actual um, salaries that they receive is is actually staggered on that basis uh, but we can't um have a situation where uh, we, we we the cost that we put through to the congregation um we differ in, in, in younger and older pastors when everybody is going to want to have the, the, the youngest pastor. And in practice, we only have two pastors that are not on the, on the maximum scale in any of it. Uh, so it is actually a very, very small percentage that there's a difference. So you do pay for the most experienced pastor, even if you have a very young pastor and over time, hopefully, that will uh, change in the swings and roundabouts. Thank you very much, Vernon. Uh, I don't see any further hands. Heino Kusel, is there anything in the chat that needs to be brought into, into these points as part of the discussion? Heino, are you there? Please unmute yourself. Hey. Uh, is there anything that needs to be brought in from the chat? No, there is nothing. Can you hear me now, Andy? Um, Yes, thank you very much. Um, we would no, then... Thank you, Andy. Andy, just as, as uh, Heine was saying, there's nothing. The uh, question came into the chat about the formula for contribution to the church. Uh, is it either by family or by individual member? Um, and I can just respond, it is neither. Uh, it is basically by congregation. So if you have a pastor's post, uh, then that is the amount that Vernon showed, the, that yellow part. And for each congregation, the blue part, no matter whether you are big or small. So there's no calculation uh, um, of membership uh, taken into consideration. The number of membership in the congregation is not, in our budget, not part of the calculation. And each congregation has its own arrangement, you know, uh, whatever congregation wants to do in their own cases, that's what they do. Thank you very much to both the bishop and our treasurer. We would then, we're coming to the point of adoption of the budget. And I hand over to our bishop who's technically managing the poll, the vote for the adoption of the budget. Thank you, uh, Henning. Uh, I will launch the budget. The question again is the same. Adopt the budget, yes, no, or abstain. Currently, uh, we are standing on 67 participants. Uh, and with the load shedding, one can see it going up and down. But it means we, we do have a quorum. And <clears throat> it seems as if most are... Uh, understanding the system quite well, it will manage to get the vote button going. If you can't uh, click on the vote button, you can type into the um, chat and say yes, no, or abstain. Uh, we are almost there. We've got three missing. Two. One. Uh, 
Mr. President, I can close the vote. Thank you. And I will share the results. Um, so there was one uh, um, that could not, and I got the response in the um, chat. <clears throat> so the, uh, the budget is adopted unanimously. Thank you very much. And well done also to our treasurer, Vernon. We are running a bit short of time in 25 minutes. Our treasurer will be cut off due to load shedding. So I would like to go into Church Luan as quick as possible. Thank you. Sorry, I've, I'm muted. Um, this is just technically uh, in Church Law 1, there's a standard uh, schedule that converts all these budgeted items that we've just uh, adopted um, into uh, financial contributions by the con congregants, um, which for the various years is the pastors in service, the church running cost, the KwaZulu Natal youth hub fund uh, because they, alloc they charge uh, a certain amount from the eastern and southern circuit um, congregations to contribute to the hub and that amount then is per the various schedules 2022 and 23 schedules and you would have received that in the document that was sent the pdf document that was sent to you and then the solidarity contributions is the total money that this budget or church law one expects as contributions from the congregations or by the congregations. And then we have um, the income from other sources, which is EKD, and I see I must change that to grant, uh, and net investment return, which then will leave us with a total income. And then the expenses is the pastors in service, the church running cost, and the KZN Youth Hub Fund, which is an in and out, leaving us with the income less expenses um, on that level, uh, which is balancing with the uh, budget that, that we've just adopted. So um, the process would uh, probably be for us to adopt this. Um, uh, and we then just have one little change on the section 74 one, which is the prescribed and recommended offerings. We have the situation where uh, Deutsche Schule Hermannsburg was always a recommended offering, but because uh, the Deutsche Schule Hermannsburg is now owned by a private institution and in discussions with um, the the people on the ground in Hermannsburg, um, we have we are recommending to change that uh, offering to HMB Foundation, um, which uh, is a foundation that would give um, scholarships and whatever for Hermannsburg Schule, and also I think uh, support the um, the museum in Hermannsburg uh, for that. So we are also asking for adoption of that particular one. Thank you. Mr. President, can I just quickly say, because I can't raise my hand, um, uh, to, just to explain, because that development in Hermannsburg happened after the previous synod, the, um, the new owners, we had an in-depth discussion with the new owners about the relationship between the school and the church and the ethos, ethos of the school. Uh, and the uh, uh, the new owners want to maintain the relationship to the church and the ethos, the Christian ethos of the school. Uh, and based on that, we then agree to continue with the school pastor's post uh, as a half post. And also uh, made the suggestion that this uh, um, voluntary collection continues because it can still be used uh, as it was before, also for the support of, of uh, um, learners to attend that school with the ethos that we still support and that supports us. So that's just a brief explanation, but at the continuation of the Senate, we will then receive the detailed report on these developments.
Henning, I'm, I'm done. We can now uh, proceed to adopt uh, the Church Law 1 and this amendment. Very briefly, are there any questions on the Church Law 1? Most of it has been covered already in the budget and the financial report. No questions. Is there anything in the chat? I don't see anything there. No, I think there's nothing. Thank you very much, Heino. I would then like to hand over to our bishop again that we can proceed with the adoption of Church Law 1. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the as participants are standing at 67. I will now launch uh, the poll. And again, it is the question, adopt Church Law 1, yes, no, or abstain. And you can log in your reply if you can't for some reason, do it via the poll function. You can put into the chat uh, your response. It's really going well. We've got 63, 64, 65, just two that are battling to do their vote. Okay, I, I can't get into I say yes, thank you. Thank you, Heino. Mr. President, I will then close the, um, the poll because again, it is very clear. Um, it is a, a unanimous adoption of Church Law 1. And again, I must say thank you very much uh, to the treasurer for all the preparation and explanation. <laughs> I'm just trying to share this. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll come to the detailed thank yous just now. Just a reminder, all Senate delegates, that is all of you that are here as part of this third sitting of the Seventh Church Senate of Nelksa will remain Senate members for our physical sitting next year in 2022. The bishop and all persons holding posts which have to be elected at the 2021 sitting of Senate will remain in their post until new elections have taken place at the physical sitting in 2020. 22. Please diarize the dates for the continuation of the Synod. They are, we are starting on Friday. As we have now completed with the finances, we will not have another finance section except for the motion that has been raised by you or will be raised by UELC on the name of the solid, solidarity contribution. So there won't be a finance session, so we decided to actually shorten the Synod. We will start on Friday the 14th of October, and then the Synod concludes with the service on Sunday the 16th of October in 2022. The venue, venue will be the North Rand Congregation, and we look looking forward to continue Synod the Senate of 2021 in October 2022. I'd like to thank all of you for attending today. I would like to, yes, sorry. Henning, there was a question from Rainer Fokke about the Senate in 2023. Must we decide now where it will be out or will it be done on a later stage? I don't think we have prepared sufficiently and, and asked people for input on that. So I would rather like to do that um, via church council in the next uh, couple of weeks. Um, Horst, do you, would you agree with that? The yes, I agree. Synod. Yes, I agree. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, thank you very much to Vernon Filter for the professional manner in which he is managing the finances of Nelksa and also today's presentation. 
it's been echoed by various people I see in the chat and also in comments that were made. Thank you to Lisa Lotte Kirkline for taking the minutes today and for her work at the church office of Nelksa. We thank Bishop Horst Müller for all the technical management of the meeting today, but far above that, we'd like to thank Bishop Horst Müller for his leadership of our church for the last 12 years, also for the coming year, especially in this rather difficult time of COVID. Thank you very much, Horst, for all that you're doing for our church. Thank you to all those who had contributed to today's meeting and helped to make it possible. I wish you all a blessed weekend and blessed services to all the congregations tomorrow morning. There was one comment in the chat early on, which I saw about vaccinations. I just want to stay quickly. We don't take a, we don't have any records of vaccinations in our church, so um, there is nothing that can be reported on that. Heino, is there any other thing in the chat that needs to be mentioned, or are there any raised hands at the moment? I have not got a view of all the participants. I would like to raise my hand. Thank you. Thank you, Os. Um, yeah, I want to thank you as president uh, and the Senate team and church council. Uh, it's, it's been a huge challenge to all of us. Uh, and I also want to thank each one of you who's present here and those watching on YouTube um, for your uh, dedication, for your participation. Um, it is so, so important for us as church to, to continue. I must say, I really miss the physical uh, contact meetings. Uh, and so I hope that next year will be a lot better. Uh, I briefly wanted to touch on the topic for Synod 2021. You see it on the screen alive. And uh, <clears throat> there's a planning team that met regularly uh, to start preparing and came up with suggestions. And when the Senate, the physical session was postponed to next year, uh, we um, put some of the things on hold because we don't know how the uh, developments are going to uh, affect the way that we plan Senate 2021 next year. But the topic alive uh, is alive. And you will, early in 2022, uh, all receive homework in the congregations with challenges for, for things to do in the congregation in preparation of the Synod session. So I want to give you an early warning to say it's going to come. Uh, and I think it's going to be beautiful. Uh, it's going to be exciting. And I hope that a year from now, uh, as we prepare uh, for, for this uh, physical set sessions of Synod, that we will be alive and full of excitement. So that's what I wanted to share from my side. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Bishop Horstmiller. We really appreciate that. And yeah, I'd then like to ask Dieter Kusel to pray with us and close off this session of Synod until we meet again in October 2022. Thank you very much, Henning. Henning. Thank you. Yes, I'm there. I think our biggest thanks goes to our Heavenly Father. So I ask you just to join me as we bow our hearts in prayer to the Lord. Lord, we turn to you. You are the Almighty, the Eternal, the Wise, the Loving Creator of the universe. But you still have time for each one of us. We thank you that we could meet online. We thank you that we could plan, discuss, and deliberate. Thank you that the congregation is, or the church finances are in the position that they are in, despite the pandemic. And there are many congregations, however, that are at the coal face and that are going through uncharted territory but you are there as you have been with, our, with the church throughout the ages. There have been even greater challenges faced by the church, but the church has prevailed. We pray especially for the pastors 
and all those in church leadership positions and the struggling congregations. Some might be feeling that they are tumbling down a mountainside and being battered and bruised. We pray that you would be the safety net that catches them and holds them and enfolds them. Some might be feeling that they are going down raging rapids and unable to keep their heads above water. We ask that there you would provide the still waters, the calm waters. Others might be feeling that they are walking through a desert with unbearable heat, energy fading. Lord, there we ask that you would be the oasis that provides the necessary rest and shade and the living water that bubbles up to provide new life. Others might be carrying heavy burdens of heavy backpacks or burdens that are weighing them down. And we just pray there, Lord, as well, that you would enable each one of them to place those at the foot of the cross to be relieved of all that pressure. Lord, your word promises us that we are not alone through the storms. If we turn to you, you can be our calm at the center of the storms of life, which will always be there. We ask that you would teach us to be quiet, that we learn anew, just to sit at your feet, just like Mary sat and listened and absorbed, especially in these frenetic times. Teach us the discipline to be quiet because there we can draw inspiration and hope and we can experience that living water bubbling up within us. We heard earlier that the strong should be there to help the weak. We always find ourselves in different situations in our life, our life's journey and where we are strong, maybe help those that are weak. And as congregation members, Lord, we pray that we would not be like the Dead Sea, where the water only flows in and there is no life, but that we would pass on. We are your ambassadors, Lord. You have given us much. You have blessed us with much. And you call us to give and to share and to bless others. Lord, may your name be glorified through us. And once again, we give you thanks for a very successful meeting. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank amen. you very much. Enjoy amen. the weekend. Thank you, same to you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks very much, Henning. Thanks, Tita. Thanks, everybody. Henning. Thank Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye. 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 Thank you so much. Bye. 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 Anita. <clears throat> Thank you and goodbye. Bye. Goodbye.